正会。Rebirth of the malicious empress of military lineage, Chapter 128. Guess it out on the second day. Shen Miao got up late. Zi Jingxin came yesterday at the third of the five night watch periods, modern timing, 11 p.m., 1 a.m., and she was so exhausted after talking with him, so she had a night of dreamless sleep. And when she woke up, it was already very late. Shen Miao was rarely lazy in getting up, thus Lu Zhu Yan took it that she was tired due to the tribute feast yesterday. And instructed the others to leave food for Shen Miao so that she could eat upon waking up. Shen Xin and Lu Zhu Yan went to the Ministry of War as they were just reinstated and need to handle a number of old matters. Shen Kaiyu and Lu Ling were also not in the house because Lu Ling was searching for an assignment. Thus, Shen Xin might as well let Lu Ling assist Shen Kaiyu so that others would not bully Lu Ling for being green. As a result, in this new Shen residence. There was only Lu Dan and Shen Miao left. As it turns out, Feng and Ning sent an invitation to Shen Miao today, requesting Shen Miao to accompany her to pick some jewelry. Shen Miao let Lu Tan go instead and also sent a few Shen residence guards for Lu Tan, and only said that she felt tired and want to rest in the residence for the day. Lu Tan did not say anything else and urged Shen Miao again before leaving. After Lu Tan left. Shen Miao instructed Mo Qing to send a letter to Guang Wenteng, and Mo Qing left after complying. After the lapse of two years, there were at the end some changes in the Ding capital. For example, young lady Liu Ying of Bao Xiang Lu, that was previously a buzz and hot favorite, was redeemed by that infatuated gentleman Mo with thousands tales of gold. There was no longer a young lady Liu Ying, but in the past few years, double-sided embroidery, which was long lost. Quietly appeared in the Ding capital, and one bolt of embroidered silk was sold to hundreds of tails. One heard that that not only the embroidery lady had exceptional skills, she was also very pretty and managed the embroidery workshop so well that it earned bushels of gold daily. Changing to another means of living, in fact, might not be worse off. No one knew the hope that would rise after the first step was taken for Liu Ying to live well. The person worried about her would also be happy. Pei Liang was one that kept his promises. Thus, when Chen Miao saw Pei Liang at the tribute dinner, she had a plan in her heart. Pei Liang had already obtained Fu Ziyu Yi's trust, and thus was willing to keep Pei Liang by his side, even though Fu Ziyu Yi was mistrustful. And this intensified after he became the monarch. But in all fairness, The current Fu Ziyu Yi was still very appreciative and cherished talents. Pei Liang was one who had ravine in his heart, so Fu Ziyu Yi would definitely find ways to keep Pei Liang around. It was precisely because of that Fu Ziyu Yi tested Pei Liang's virtues and integrity. She could not see Pei Liang hastily, else it would arouse Fu Ziyu Yi's suspicions that Pan had not even passed the line that divided the rival territories. She said. Bring the cloak out. Bei Lu and Shuang Zhang were tidying the room and asked curiously when they heard Shen Miao. Young lady is going out. Shen Miao said, "There are some things that needs to be done." Bei Lu and Shuang Zhang no longer spoke as Gu Yu silently went forward to comb Shen Miao's hair and Jing's went to bring the cloak out. It was not visible, but Shen Miao's maids immediately obeyed her orders. That if anyone were to see this, they would definitely be shocked, as even the servants from the palace would not necessarily be this swift and calmed. After leaving the residence's door, Mo Qing went to Guang Wenteng. So Shen Miao called for Akai. Shen Miao was currently much closer with this subordinate of Shen Kaiyu, as when they were at the northwestern region, Shen Miao came out with many military ideas for Shen Kaiyu. Which naturally was what she heard from Fu Ziyu Yi's advisers in the past. Even though she just followed mechanically, from others' perspective, they found that Shen Miao's stratagems were as if conceived by divine beings, and that she had the talents of a general. Those army leads were all uncouth, brawny males, but they admired Shen Miao's brains and were much more respectful. Shen Miao said to Ah Kai, "Do not tell others about the outing today." Ah Kai's heart quivered. His allegiance was originally with Shen Kaiyu, but at this moment he felt that Shen Miao's clear eyes were giving so much pressure that he nodded, 
Yes, Akai found an ordinary carriage for Shen Miao. Since this carriage did not attract others' attention, others would not be able to recognize that it was the Shen family's horse carriage. There was no other reason but because Shen Miao offended the Princess Ming and from the Ken country yesterday, and Huang Fu Hao and Princess Ming and were currently staying in the Yan King Lane, which was not far from her house. If by coincidence they meet, it would be bad if Princess Ming and gave Shen Miao problems. This princess was very arrogant and willful and the Qin country had lots of guards. If something really came out, it would be too late for Shen Xin and wife to come over with more people. It was just that Takai's heart was still very puzzled. Leaving the capital for two years, if one were to speak about who in the Din capital had friendship with Shen Miao, it would be the young lady of the Feng residence, Feng and Ning. But today, Shen Miao rejected Feng and Ning's invitation so it was obvious that she was not going to see her. Akai's imagination ran wild and started thinking of the novels that Lu Tan speak about in the Lu family to Lu Qian. Akai's heart quivered. If it was really some secret relationship with whichever gentleman, he would do his utmost to inform Shen Kaiyu of the matter. It was so difficult for their Shen family to have such a talented and good-looking young lady. How could some wild kid from who knows where, come and snatch her away? But it did not dawn to him that the place that Shen Miao wanted to go was the Feng Xian Pawn Shop. The Feng Xian Pawn Shop was the same as two years ago, still deserted. After all, not everyone had treasures to pawn here. Shen Miao alighted from the carriage and Akai followed closely, with Jing's and Gu Yu also jumping down. Akai had no time to size the place up. When he saw Shen Miao heading into the pawn shop without consulting anyone, the shop assistant that was wiping the table saw the four people heading in. The person in front was wearing a cloak, but then pulled the cloak and veiled hat down, revealing a delicate face, clearly a pampered young lady of a big family, and the noble air around her made one unable to underestimate her. He smiled fawningly. Does young lady want to pawn something? Shen Miao glanced at him. The shop assistant of the pawn shop had changed and one heard that after they went to Zhao Chun City, the Feng Xian pawn shop was closed for two years. It was only reopened not too long ago, but one did not know if that young lady Hong Ling and Ji Yu Xu were still around. She said, I am looking for Hong Ling. The shop assistant was surprised for a moment before carefully looking at Shen Miao again. Shen Miao looked at him calmly and the shop assistant paused for a moment before quickly saying, May young lady please wait for a moment. He then turned around and entered the back hall. A moment later, a red-clad female came forward with that shop assistant following behind. She was still clad in a red dress and her appearance was much more amorous even more moving than two years ago. When she saw Shen Miao, her pupils coagulated before suddenly laughing, long time no see. Young lady is increasingly more beautiful that Hong Ling could not even open her eyes. Even though Hong Ling said these rude and impudent words, one did not feel that they were slutty, but instead there was a kind of straightforward feel to them. Shen Miao nodded her head faintly and Hong Ling smiled again before speaking, old rules. Young lady follow me but. She pointed her fair finger towards Akai and delicately laughed. This silly great hulk cannot come along. Akai had a lively personality and was not as cold and detached as Mo King, so when he was pointed out by Hong Ling, a flirtatious female, his face turned red. But he still insisted, this subordinate will follow young lady. You wait here. Shin Miao said. I am going to see a friend. It is enough for Jing's and Gu Yu to follow. Her tone was uncompromising, thus Akai was unable to say any words of refute. On the contrary when Hong Ling saw this, a peculiar look flashed in her eyes. Most likely she did not expect that Shen Miao, a small and delicate person, would discipline her guards every time till they are docile and obedient. Moreover be it Mo King or Ake. They all respected her from the bottom of their hearts. A skilled subordinate would often be haughty but in front of Shen Miao, these people did not have even a little arrogance at all. Shen Miao was a capable person. Hong Ling brought Shen Miao to the Lin Zhongzhan building. Jing's and Gu Yu were following behind as Shen Miao asked. One heard that the Feng Xian pawn shop only reopened not long ago. Two years ago. Two years ago. There was some changes in the manager's family, 
Thus he closed the pawn shop and headed back to the hometown. It was only recently that he returned to the Ding capital. Hong Ling smiled and continued the thread, speaking of which, young lady is our pawn shop's first long-time customer. Shin Miao had calculated it in her heart and just smiled faintly in agreement. When they reached the building, like previously, Hong Ling settled her down in the elegant room. Hong Ling will now call the manager. May young lady wait here a while and have some tea. Finishing speaking, she left the room. There were plums and tea on the table with incense rising in spirals. This elegant room was exactly the same as before. For such a big pawn shop like the Fengzian pawn shop, they did not rent it out to others and just let it sit here during the two years of not running the business. It really had an appearance of a rich and powerful magnate. Before Shen Miao finished the cup of tea, there was the sound of someone pushing the door open from the outside. She placed the tea cup down and saw a person clad in a jade green gold brocaded long robe, wearing a gold headgear and a smile as he approached. That person still had a baby face as previously but because of the two years, he now showed a bit of maturity. It was just that he still had the look of mischievousness like in the past but, Shin Miao looked at him. This Ji Yu Shu wore such gaudy clothes but could still look that happy. This person must be extremely coquettish, down to his bones. When Ji Yu Shu pushed open the doors and saw Shen Miao, his eyes lit up and did not hide the slightest as he praised. One thought that young lady Xiao Yao was the most beautiful young lady that this one had seen. But now it seems that young lady Shen is not to be outdone. One have not seen for two years and young lady's magnificence has increased so much, that this one is unable to find any words to praise young lady. When Jing and Gu Yu saw this, a look of displeasure appeared on their faces. Ji Yu Shu words were a perfect example of a skirt chaser taking liberties of young females. But such words were coming out from this innocent face making one confused if he was deliberately stupid, or this was just unintentional words. Shin Miao smiled faintly, Manager Ji is also more affluent than before. Her gaze landed on Ji Yu Shu's gaudy clothes. Ji Yu Shu sat opposite Shen Miao and poured himself a cup of tea, looking very happy like he was sincerely rejoiced with the reunion. He said, one did not think that young Lady Shen still remembered this old friend. One heard that General Shen just returned to the capital not too long ago, and young Lady Shen was not in the rush to see others but came to the Feng's Yan pawn shop, seemingly treating this one as a trusted person. This one's heart is really moved. Shen Miao. Last night a person with wishful thinking just left and now another one came. Shen Miao only felt somewhat of a headache. Moreover Zhu Yushu said it so seriously, he really thought that Shen Miao was that close with him. Shen Miao lightly coughed, actually one come here today to do business with manager Ji, one just returned back to the Ding capital and is not clear about many matters. Thus one would need to rely on the Bei Zhaosheng. Ji Yushu was first startled before saying, Do business? That is good to talk about. The Bei Zhaosheng would sincerely put every effort for what young Lady Shen want to know. As for the cost, since this one is friends with young Lady Shen, one will give a reduction of two tenths, 20% discount. Jing's and Gu Yu were rolling their eyes behind. Ji Yushu was managing such a big family business the pawn shop on the surface, but he was actually doing a business of no capital, and one transaction would become an endless stream of money but he was so stingy. Two tenths, it was indeed that all businessmen were evil. Shin Miao faintly smiled, money is easy to handle but this time the information is not easy at all. Ji Yu Shu said, young lady Shen really know how to joke. At that time even the business of creating information, my Feng's Yan pawn shop accepted and deal with it without any mistakes, so what else can one not accept? But manager Ji was not in the Ming Chi for two years. One fear that it would be a bit troublesome to inquire about matters of the Ming Chi. She said. Ji Yushu smiled and his eyes showed an unspeakable pride. Young Lady Shen must not underestimate the Feng's Yan pawn shop. Although this one was not in the Ding capital for these two years and the Feng's Yan pawn shop was also closed, business still needed to be done. Else how would one have money to support one's family? The Zhao Beixing is still working. After all, 
one cannot just throw away two years of harvest. Young Lady Shen do speak, what information do you want to inquire? I, the manager of the Feng Zhang pawn shop will naturally serve Young Lady all the way. Shen Mi out chuckled, since manager Ji spoke as such, then I am rest assured. Today one come here to make three business dealings and they are all purchasing of information. The first one, does manager G know the news about the death in battle of the little Marquise of the residence of the Marquis of Linen? G Yushu was surprised for a moment before looking at Shen Miao, why does young lady Shen want to inquire about this? The Z family and my Shen family are all Ming Qi's military lineage families. Even though the Marquis of Linen is in a politically disagreement with my father, but at the end military people appreciate one another. As the proverbs goes, the fox grieves when the rabbit dies, for the little Marquis Z, a talent of the generation who died in battle, one felt that it is a great pity, thus one want manager G to do me a favor and find out about the details of the little Marquis Z's death, including the disappearance. G Yushu drank a sip of tea and smiled, this is easy to handle. It is just that Zi Jingxing's death is very well known thus to find out something different, it would not be easy. This one cannot promise to be able to get the information, after all light extinguishes when a person die and this happened a long time ago. Manager Ji just need to do things wholeheartedly, if one is truly unable to find, it is alright for me. Shen Miao then picked up the teapot and poured herself a cup of tea, before speaking breezily like a gentle wind, the second business stealing. Does manager Ji know that there is an imperial physician in the Ming Qi's palace called Jiao Yang? With a poo sound, Ji Yushu sprayed a mouthful of tea out. Xin Miao gave Jing's a glance, and Jing's quickly handed a handkerchief over. Ji Yushu took the handkerchief and scrambled to wipe off the water stains on himself, then and heard Shen Miao speaking. Manager Ji seemed to be very surprised, coughing sound. Ji Yushu said, indeed somewhat surprised, how did young lady Shen thought about finding about this imperial physician of the palace, was just requested by others. Shen Miao looked at him, manager Ji had not heard of this name before. Ji Yushu shook his head, first time hearing it. It seemed that his medical skills are not that high else he would be famous. He looked at Shen Miao and said complicatedly, to tell you without hiding. How is young lady involved with the palace? Even though the Beijiao Shen does business, but the forces involved in the palace are just too great, that it is too risky for our business. Shen Miao just looked at him without speaking, and those calm eyes made Ji Yushu himself feel somewhat uneasy. Ji Yushu softly coughed twice and his voice inexplicably lowered, it is not that it cannot be done, just that more money. Manager Ji do not need to worry about money. Shin Miao smiled lightly, one would not short change manager G. G Yushu was already short of breath, and guilty with the two business dealings that Shen Miao had mentioned. He laughed dryly twice before speaking, one does know what is the third information that young lady want to buy? The third one is a bit difficult. Shin Miao looked at him, but I believe with manager G's ability, it is a sooner or later thing. When Ji Yushu heard this, he barely smiled, many thanks to young lady Shen's trust but, what kind of thing it is to make young lady Shen feel in this way, I want to inquire about someone. Shen Miao placed the teacup down, his highness Prince Ruai of the Great Liang. The teacup in Ji Yushu's hand slightly shook, but on surface he still had the look of being unfathomable, oh? How did young lady Shen thought inquiring about his highness Prince Ruai, to this one's knowledge? This Highness Prince Ru I only came to the Ding capital recently. If one really have some friendship, it would be when young Lady Shen saw him during the tribute banquet. Could it be that young Lady Shen is like those noble females, and fell for Prince Ru I's good looks and thus come to inquire? When Ji Yushu spoke till the last part, one did not know why he became happy, and his voice became somewhat excited as compared to the previous downcast one. Jing's and Gu Yu who were standing behind almost blew up. For Ji Yushu to speak such nonsense, if people outside heard of it, how would they think of Shen Miao? But servants could not intervene when masters were speaking, 
so both of them could only endure and look at Ji Yushu with contempt and anger. Shin Miao looked at the excited Ji Yushu as he scratched his ears and suddenly laughed. Yes, I also admire his peerless beauty. Ji Yushu was startled. He suddenly opened his mouth and pointed at Shen Miao unbelievingly, stuttering. This, this remark is true? Shen Miao nodded her head and said seriously, really. It was like Ji Yushu had found a major secret as he had an unrestrainable look on. He laughed twice before saying, in that case then this one will definitely inquire about Prince Rui's situation for young lady. See if there are any other females at his side. Shin Miao got up and nodded her head at Ji Yushu. Then many thanks to manager Ji, if anything is discovered, do send someone over to the residence, and I will naturally come over to the Feng's Yan pawn shop to meet up with manager Ji. She took out a silver tail and placed in front of Ji Yushu. This is the deposit. Ji Yushu said with all smiles, Young Lady Shen is too kind. Between us, there is no need for a deposit. He said that as he put that tail into his sleeves. That provoked Jing's and Gu Yu to roll their eyes a couple of times at him. Shen Miao smiled, It is heaven's law and earth's principle to receive money when doing tasks. It is just that manager Ji must remember one point. Her brows were warm but the words that were spoken were a bit sharp. The Beijiao Sheng's business rule is that good are genuine and at fair prices. Otherwise if money is spent but the information is useless. Shin Miao lowered her head and laughed. It would only destroy manager Ji's reputation, and one can no longer do business. This would be bad. Ji Yushu was stunned as Shen Miao called Jing and Gu Yu and then they left the room. He was momentarily stunned before hearing Hong Ling send Shen Miao off with smiles and he looked at the teacup in front of him and suddenly sneezed. He rubbed his nose and stood up, before walking to a landscape painting opposite and pulling it open. There was a door hidden and Ji Yushu opened it. When he went in, he was kicked and almost fell down. He closed the door and shouted angrily and the initiator, Jiao Yang. The white-clad person sitting behind the door had a sage-like appearance, waving a fan gently and elegantly, but the words he said were not very polite. Ji Yushu, is there something wrong with your brains? If this goes on, you would not even know if someone sell you off. Ji Yushu said angrily, you are clever. You are clever but someone still discovered some inkling. Someone actually said to look for Imperial. Physician, Jiao, shut up. The person at the corner finally could not help but speak. It was a purple clad person who was none other than Zi Jing Xing. He swept a glance at Ji Yushu. Noisy. Ji Yushu felt wronged and said, Third older brother, I do not know anything. I left the capital with you and just upon my return, someone discovers something is wrong. This is obviously Jiao Yang's mistake. Ji Yushu looked fiercely at Jiao Yang, speak. Is it that something went wrong with you that was discovered by young lady Shen? This elegant room was adjacent to the room beside. So one was able to hear the dialogue Ji Yushu had with Shen Miao clearly. The conversation between the two of them was all heard by Zi Jing Xing and Jiao Yang. When one think about it, the three person that Shen Miao wanted to inquire were all here. It was indeed strange. Ji Yushu, are you stupid? Jiao Yang said, Shen Miao also came back to the Ding capital a few days ago. Unless she is clairvoyant. How could she know about what I do in the palace? I also suspect that it is you who have a problem. What problem can I have? Young Lady Shen did not inquire about me, but inquired about you without any rhyme or reason for that. Could it be that she is pleased with you? But Young Lady Shen admired third older brother's beauty? Ji Yushu thought about something and mischievously smiled. He he he. Young Lady Shen is also bewitched by third older brother. Only such a fool like you will believe this kind of nonsense. Jiao Yang looked at him coldly. Do you think that everyone is dazzled by beauty like you? Ji Yushu patted his chest. I cannot beat you with words so I will not talk more with you. Third older brother. What needs to be done now? Need to inquire for her? Or just casually weave some information to bluff her? Since Shen Miao inquired these three informations, 
it is presumed that she have some understanding to them, thus those lies would be discovered. What intention Shen Miao have? Even one could not clearly see the Shen family's stand. Pei Lang who had some secret friendship with Shen Miao is now Fu Ziyu Yi's confidant. How could a young lady be this complicated? Jiao Yang mumbled and discovered that Zi Jingxing did not listen to him at all and only looked at the teacup in front of him. One did not know what he was thinking about so he reminded, Z, your highness, how to deal with this matter this time. Z Jingxing recovered to his senses and thought for a moment, no need to deal with it. Why? Not waiting for Jiao Yang to speak, Ji Yushu spoke first, not earning money. Moreover young Lady Shen is exceptionally intelligent and is one were to really reject her, she would discover something is not right. What if she discovers something is wrong with our Feng's Yan pawn shop? Zi Jingxing smiled faintly, because she is clever thus she need not be dealt with. Your meaning is? Jiao Yang frowned. She discovered that something was wrong and came over to probe. Zi Jingxing narrowed his eyes and his lips hooked up. Those words were not said for you to hear, but for me to hear them. The words of peerless beauty? Ji Yushu focus was forever different from others. Zi Jingxing gave him a cold glance, that was also said for me to hear. In the horse carriage outside, Jing's and Gu Yu carefully looked at Shen Miao's expression. Gu Yu softly said, Young lady, it is that manager Ji had said something wrong. Young lady look a little angry. Indeed very angry. Even though Shen Miao looked calm and quiet on the surface, the cold air around her was felt by the two maids. She seemed to be sulking but also to be in anger, it was just that she was enduring the anger. Jing's and Gu Yu were very puzzled, as they heard the entire conversation between Shen Miao and Ji Yu Shu. Even though Ji Yu Shu's words were not pleasant to hear, Shen Miao was still alright till now. Moreover Shen Miao was not one who would get angry because of someone's words. Jing's and Gu Yu did not understand. Shen Miao replied lightly, it is nothing. But her tone was cold. The sleeves that she was holding onto were slightly clenched, and an uncontrollable oppression appeared in her heart. The Feng's Yan pawn shop closed shortly after she left and now reopened shortly before she returned to the capital. How would there be such coincidence in this world? All the coincidences in the world were writings on the wall, thus Shen Miao carefully thought about it. When the Feng's Yan pawn shop closed, other than Shen Xin going to Zhao Chun City, there was another major event, which was Zi Jingxing requesting commandership for battle. As for the Feng's Yan pawn shop reopening, other than her returning to the capital, it was just nice that the tribute of Ming Qi was happening, and at this time the crown prince of the Qin and Prince Rui of the Great Liang came to the Ding capital. The Shen family and the Feng's Yan pawn shop did not have the slightest relationship, so naturally it would not be related to the Shen family. Huang Fu Hao did not come to the Ding capital two years ago thus no matter how one thought, the closing and reopening was indelibly related to Zi Jingxing. She went to the Feng's Yan pawn shop today just to probe. The result of her probing was indeed what she had expected. One fear that Ji Yushu was formerly acquainted with Zi Jingxing and Zhao Yang likewise. With all the relations, one fear that Ji Yushu and Zhao Yang were all great Liang people, but hid their identities in Ding capital. The most vile thing was that during the business with Ji Yushu, about the selling of Prince Yu residence, one fear that Zi Jing Crossing Long knew of the matter clearly. She thought that she took the opportunity and firmly eaten Ji Yu Shu, but at the end Zi Jing Xing was the golden oriole behind. Proverb, the golden oriole waits upon the cicada. Thinking of how Zi Jing Xing made a fool out of her, Shen Miao could not wait to tear Zi Jing Xing apart. Her heart felt oppressed but when Jing saw this, she thought that she was too warm and opened the curtain for air to enter but quickly let it down. Shen Miao casually took a glance and saw a familiar face in the crowded streets. Jing's let the curtain down but was stopped by Shen Miao and the carriage was stopped. She pulled the curtain open, and looked towards that direction but the face was no longer in the crowd. Young lady? Jing's and Gu Yu were shocked by Shen Miao's actions today. But after Shen Miao carefully looked outside the carriage for a while, she put the curtains down and said, Nothing, carry on. It was just that her brows were locked tightly and her expression were much more solemn than before. 